A Revival Certificate We have been furnished with the following copy of an extraordinary certificate which has been copiously issued by a number of influential citizens of Philadelphia who are interested in promoting the present religious revival. It bears a close resemblance to the old papal expedient of selling indulgences. Stockholders are guaranteed to receive 100 times as much as they put in. Matthew 19, verse 29. Those who continue to pay into the fund as much as six cents a week for three years in succession to be life members of the American Systematic Beneficent Society. Those who do this for six years to be honorary members for life. Those who do this for ten years to be honorary vice presidents for life. Those who do this from love to Christ while they live will have a free admission through the gates into the heavenly city, a snow-white robe, a heavenly harp, a crown of gold, and a seat at the right hand of the final judge. Signed, M. W. Baldwin, President, G. H. Stewart, Vice President, Thos Cooper, Treasurer, W. J. R. Taylor, Recording Secretary, John Gulliver, Corresponding Secretary. This certificate, with the remarks which precede it, appears to have been clipped from a Philadelphia paper. It was handed to us by a friend who seemed to think it entitled to some special notice as indicating the progressive march of Antichrist. It is true the spirit of modern fanaticism assumes occasionally some new and novel phrases, but the principles and policy of the powers of darkness have always been substantially the same in all ages. Chartered companies, with titled officers, for evangelizing the world, together with numerous financiering agencies for collecting and dispersing funds, for the professed object of sustaining that kingdom, which is not of this world, and that gospel, which is without money and without price, have been too numerous to attract any unusual attention. But the stock-jobbing enterprise of the American Systematic Beneficent Society proposes to divide the throne of the eternal God into six penny shares and sell the mansions of immortal glory for filthy lucre. Were any organized company of men to practice such frauds in regard to an earthly territory that does not belong to them, they would, on conviction of their rascality, be lodged in our state prisons. But the fraud of thus swindling the unsuspecting and credulous Sunday school victims of their toy money, mean and unjustifiable as it is, sinks to insignificance when compared with the bold, unblushing blasphemy of offering the throne of Jehovah for sale. God who occupies that high and exalted seat has said, Heaven is my throne. And this band of pious swindlers advertise that heaven for sale. And to crown the climax of their effrontery, they forged the endorsement of him who overturned the tables of the money changers and scourged all manner of religious traffickers from his temple. And forbid peremptorily that his father's house should be made a place of merchandise or occupied as a den of thieves. To pretend that the blessed Savior in Matthew 19.29 gave his sanction to their swindling religious stock-jobbing operations is handling the word of God deceitfully and turning the truth of God into a lie. In the darkest ages of popery, no greater abominations were practiced for swindling unconscious children of their money. Truly, as the scripture said of these worshippers of mammon, that they subvert whole houses and lead about the silly for filthy lucre's sake. Gilbert Beebe, Middletown, New York, June 15th, 1858.